It's blueberry season again. Time to make some blueberry wine. I have 15 pounds of blueberries that I'm going to use to make 5 gallons of wine. You can use anywhere from 10 to 15 pounds, but 10 is sort of a lighter colored. 15 pounds gives you a nice dark blue wine. I currently have 12 pounds of sugar. I'm heating up here in about two gallons of water. I'm going to try to dissolve. You can use anywhere from 10 to 12 pounds, but you want at least 12% potential alcohol, uh, which is about 1.090 on the hydrometer scale. 11 pounds is what I normally use. That makes about a 13% wine. But I had 12 pounds of sugar here, so I thought I'd just kick it up a notch and see how it comes out. It'll probably be 14, 15%, which might be a little strong for some people. But for a good drinkable wine, about 15 pounds of berries and about 11 pounds of sugar comes out about right. Besides the berries and the sugar, I need to add some other ingredients. Uh, like many fruit wines, you need a pectic enzyme powder. Just follow the directions on your ingredients. This is a half teaspoon per gallon, so I'll be using two and a half teaspoons of pectic powder since it's five gallons. And I have some uh, yeast nutrient and yeast energizer. Uh, a lot of fruit wines are lacking in some of the items that yeast need to grow. So you add to these two things and it should ferment faster and not get stuck. If you don't add either one it may ferment okay but it will probably be slower and it may stop before it's done. So I'm using uh, what the ingredients indicate which is five teaspoons of yeast nutrient which is a teaspoon per gallon and a half a teaspoon per gallon of yeast energizer which comes out to 2.5 teaspoons for five gallons. And optionally we have acid blend here which adds some complex fruit flavor makes it resemble grape wines a little bit more but a lot of recipes call for a lot of acid blend I use a smaller amount than most and you can do complete without it really but I'm using a tablespoon in my five gallon batch I also have some wine tannin that uh, you normally add to a little bit of warm water and stir it in. It adds body. And I'm going to use a teaspoon, only a teaspoon of this for the whole five gallon batch. And it's optional too. Uh, blueberry wine is fairly light in body, and adding these two items will give you a little complexity, a little extra flavor, but they're not completely necessary. One thing you do need is sulfites, either potassium metabisulfite powder or Campton tablets. Either one, want, either one will work fine. So while my sugar is dissolving, I'm going to start working on these blueberries. They've been washed and weighed. These containers are each uh, three and a half quarts. So if you don't have any scales, about two and a half gallons roughly will get you close to 15 pounds. So I need to take these and what I'm going to do is put them in a blender and just chop them up. Probably not run them for more than you know, five or ten seconds, just long enough to really chop them up and bust the skins open on them. And that'll be my next thing to do. The blender is loaded, ready to blenderize some berries. But before I add anything to my fermenter, which I might add is a six and a half gallon bucket with a nylon mesh bag, lid and airlock, I made a strong sulfite solution and washed everything really well in it. I used about a gallon or so of warm water and you can either use a couple Campton tablets. I, I used a half a teaspoon of metabisulfite powder. So 
it's all sanitized and I'm ready to start adding my ingredients I need to chop up the berries my sugar is all dissolved in the water sitting on the stove cooling so I guess I better get to work that was a little over 10 seconds in the blender and that was plenty long enough so I'll start pouring that in the fermenter about half the berries have been added so I'm going to stop at this point and add my other ingredients I'm going to put my sulfites which uh, you normally use five Campton tablets one per gallon or you can use the metabisulfite powder but you just have to follow instructions on it really closely it's very strong stuff and I'll put my pectic enzyme in, my yeast nutrient, yeast energizer, acid blend and tannin along with the sulfites and get the rest of this mashed up bunch of berries in there there's all 15 pounds of blueberries all my additives sulfites and everything except for the sugar which I have dissolved over here in about two gallons of water I'm letting it cool down I don't want it real hot so I'll add that to this and probably about a gallon or so of just water in fact I may even add some water before I pour this warm sugar water in I want to end up with about five and a half gallons roughly I need headspace at the top probably maybe that much and a six and a half gallons at the top it's about six gallons here, it's about five here. So I'm going to end up somewhere between these two bands. Maybe a little towards the low side. And then I'll stir it well and take a gravity reading and see what I got. Well, the blueberries have all been secured in their nylon mesh bag. Had my handy stirrer here and I stirred it up real well get it all mixed in then I got a little clean cup here and I dug out a sample to check with my hydrometer and I'm getting about 1.16 which is pretty good I think that gives me a potential alcohol of around a little over 15% if it ferments all the way to dryness so that'll be some pretty powerful stuff I usually don't make it that strong but I feel like doing something different today it's part of the fun of wine making there it shows about 15 and a half percent I might add too that if you don't have fresh blueberries frozen ones work fine and in fact some winemakers actually freeze their fruit intentionally to help break down the cell walls so I've just tied this into a knot stirred everything up I'm going to put the lid on it just loosely the next step is just allow it to sit overnight for 24 hours allow the sulfites to dissipate and then tomorrow most important ingredient of all the yeast so I'm going to just loosely cover this with my lid you want to let the sulfite gas escape if it wants out just let it dissipate you don't really want to put an airlock on it yet some people put a cheesecloth over it I just put the lid on it and just leave the airlock hole open lay a paper towel over it and I'll show you when I get put on I have the lid on and I'm going to cover the airlock hole with a piece of paper towel just to keep the dust out of it that needs to sit for at least 24 hours give the sulfites time to work and dissipate and uh, give the pectic enzyme some time to work on that fruit so it'll sit here till tomorrow
I'd like to mention that the color is not blue. Blueberry juice is kind of a pinkish brown color. What will happen is the skins on the berries over time working in the wine will give up their color to the wine. So it's just sort of a pinkish brown color right now, the actual juice. But when the wine's finished it'll be a beautiful blue purple color. The sample was still a little warm from my warm sugar water when I first took it and that definitely affects the reading. Now that it's cooled down to about room temperature its starting gravity is actually about 1.120 as it's gotten cooler the hydrometer has risen. But I'm still well that's almost 16 percent well, not quite rocket fuel it's going to be some pretty strong stuff well it's been over 24 hours since the sulfites and the other ingredients were added so now it's time to put in the yeast I use this particular yeast EC1118 and most of the wines and meads I make has a real high alcohol tolerance and it's really clean there's lots of good wine yeast and uh, some of them will give you more fruity flavor this uh, this works pretty good for me so what I've done is rehydrate it you have to follow the directions on your yeast whatever you use put in some warm water for about 15 minutes and then what I'm going to do is get a nice clean spoon and stir that up. I get the yeast mixed in with the water really well. And take that and pour all that into my wine must. It's called must until it ferments. And then it will be wine. Someday soon, we hope, here. And I'll uh, stir that up. I'll put the lid and the airlock on it and find a nice place for it to sit. It's summertime, I'm running the air conditioner, so it'll probably ferment around 70, 75 degrees. I'm stirring in the yeast right now. You can see the color has already turned quite a bluish purple. More purple than blue. This bag tends to float to the top. So it's a good idea every couple days or every day maybe to pull the lid off the fermenter and shove it back down in to the juice. So you transfer all the sugars and the colors out of it. Well, I need to get the lid and the airlock on this and uh, hopefully we'll have some bubbles here within a day. It's a day after the yeast were added. Fermentation has begun. There's good activity in the airlock. One thing I might not have mentioned, if you use Campton tablets for your sulfites, make sure they're thoroughly crushed. You want the sulfites to get into the wine and out of the wine so your yeast can begin their work. I use metabisulfite powder in this batch. But you don't want any chunks of sulfite tablets floating around it. It makes it hard for your yeast to get started. This one's done really well. I'll keep it in a place out of the way somewhere. Try to keep it between, oh, I don't know, 70, 78, somewhere in that range. Depends what your yeast prefers. This will probably run about 75 degrees where I'm going to have it. 
Well, it's been two days now since the yeast were added. I decided to pull the lid off and punch down the skins. I'll take the lid off and uh, flip it over and just set my airlock in it just to hold it for a few minutes. Fermentation is still active. This bag gets so full of bubbles, it always wants to float to the top. You can see it's already clearing up a little. Getting a really nice color to it already. <clears throat> so I'll just get this down in there, get it nice and moist. Hold it down in there for a little bit. Give it time, let some of the bubbles out. Smells really great. It's already smelling like blueberry wine. So I might do this in a couple more days. Try to get all the flavor and the color out of those skins into the wine. So far things look pretty good. Still sitting out here in the kitchen so maybe I'll find it a home for a few more days. Everybody's figured out it's here and to walk around it so sort of fits in I guess. Check back here in a couple more days. It's six days since the yeast was added. The bubbling has slowed considerably. Maybe one bubble a minute. So the wine is nearing the completion of the primary fermentation. I think what I'll do now is take the lid off, punch down the cap, stir it well, and see if it's still bubbling tomorrow. The bubble stop completely, then I'll check the gravity and see if it's finished. The bag of fruit has dried out considerably on top. That's why it needs to be shoved down in there once in a while. It's not bubbling as much. The line's clearing a little more. We get that fruit nice and wet. I'm going to make sure it's completely fermented too, so I'll stir it a little bit. It helps bring up some of the yeast. It sure smells good. Well, I'll seal this back up. And see what it does the next day or two. Well, after stirring everything up, it's begin to bubble faster. It still tasted fairly sweet. Even without checking the gravity, I think it still has a long way to go. Most of my high gravity wines take over a week for primary fermentation, sometimes a couple weeks. So I'll watch the bubbles in this and uh, check it here in a day or two. Try to get some more complete fermentation. It's been 10 days of fermentation. It was uh, four days ago. I took the lid off and stirred it because it was bubbling rather slowly then. It's been very vigorously fermenting. For the last four days now so I haven't touched it haven't taken the lid off so I think I better do that today shove the fruit down in there stir it up a little if I'd used a normal 11 pounds of sugar it would probably be done fermenting around now looks like I want to go maybe a full two weeks the way this thing is going maybe even longer I'll get the lid off this and stir it. Well, that's quite a bit of dried up fruit bits. 
between the yeast and the blueberries it almost smells like blueberry pie <clears throat> look at that beautiful color it's not quite as vigorously fermenting as it did the first few days Well, I guess I'll get the lid put back on this. Give it a few more days. Watch the bubbles, see what happens. When the bubbles quit, then I'll take a hydrometer reading. See what is here. Looks like the bubbles have finally stopped. It's been 20 days now since the yeast was added. That's a long time, almost three weeks. Generally you like to get your fermentation done within a couple weeks because there's a lot of dead yeast and fruit starts breaking down. That's one thing about blueberry, it's slow to ferment and that's why this recipe has the yeast nutrient and the yeast energizer. If you don't add that it takes a very long time. It may not even ferment at all. So I'm gonna pull this airlock out and take my hydrometer jar, fill it down here with my uh, spigot and get a sample see what kind of gravity reading I get. I have a good hydrometer sample. Gravity is a little hard to read. This is extremely dark. Some of the most dark saturated color wine I've ever made. Very nice color. It looks like the 1.006 line is visible from above so sighting across the bottom of the surface would give you about 1.008 so I take the initial gravity of 1.12 subtract 1.008 1 I get the difference which is 0.112 so take that number and multiply it by a constant of 129 and that should give me my alcohol by volume which is 14.448 so I would round that down I'd put 14.4 on the label now it's possible this might get a little drier over time I'll take another gravity reading before I bottle it it's uh, pretty close to finished so what I'm going to do is take this and run it off into my carboy and let it sit for a month so I need to get that set up I have my carboy my tubing uh, my airlock and stopper here and I've sanitized all them with some sulfite solution and the only other thing I'm going to do before I rack my wine is to add one crushed Campton tablet. I didn't always used to do this when I'd rack wine. Most of the professional winemakers maintain some level of sulfites all the time. So throwing away it'll be a little bit of insurance give you a better chance at not getting any infections or anything so I've done that so I'm just going to start running my tubing down in there and run this down all the way to the bottom you want as little splashing as possible you just want to try to run it in there as smoothly as you can and there it goes Try to keep the speed at a reasonable level so you don't suck a lot of yeast out of the bucket. See the bag here is starting to go down. So I'll let that run out. I may have to squeeze a little juice out of the bag. We'll see what see how it looks.
getting closer to the top I tasted the sample it's pretty good it's very alcoholic it's a nice warm heat to it most people probably would like just 10 or 11 pounds of sugar in a batch but the last couple batches I made were pretty tame so I think I'm going to enjoy this it's going to be more of a sip in wine may have to age a while though try to get the last out of this bucket and get the airlock put on this I'm going to get close to the bottom I've gotten all I'm going to get out of that bucket try to get too much out and end up with yeast and all sorts of other things you don't want but uh, it's about full so what I'm going to do is add some water to that you want as little air as possible so adding a little water will displace what air is in there and uh, it won't really affect the wine that much so I'll fill that up top that off a little bit and uh, put my airlock on it add a little bit more than put my airlock on carboys topped off got the airlock on now I find a place to sit this for about one month let it clear let the solid settle and it'll probably have to be racked again before it's bottled I'm expecting two months so uh, I guess I'll have to drink this sample if I'd sanitized my hydrometer jar here I could have just poured it back in but I didn't so I don't want to put that back in my wine so I'll just drink it it's been over a month now since the first racking from the primary fermenter into this glass carboy and it's time to rack it once more I have a nice uh, PET plastic carboy latest thing I've sanitized it with uh, sulfite solution I've sanitized my racking cane and my tubing we want to use to siphon from this container down to that container. I've also crushed one Campton tablet just to add a little sulfite. Testing and maintaining a particular sulfite level is really difficult. So I just crush up one tablet and I'm going to throw it in here. Every time I rack, I do that. So I need to get my siphon started. What I do is fill up my racking cane and tubing with water and then I'll shove it into both containers at the same time. Try it and see what happens. Uh, I'm going to dump this crushed Campton tablet in there first so it should get mixed up well when the wine starts going in. Got my racking cane and my tubing. It's full of water. And I just keep my thumb over the tubing. I'm trying to shove a, the racking cane into the full carboy and get my tubing down lower into the other carboy. And I should get a siphon started. And there it goes. And splash as little as possible. At this point you don't really want much oxygen in there. The wine's siphoning out at a fairly rapid pace. Getting a few bubbles. 
One thing I do when I'm siphoning is use a non-slip. Uh, well, this is a hot pad. It lets you tilt the carboy back without it sliding. When it gets down to the bottom, I'll tilt it back to try to get the last bit off the side. So I guess I need to watch this and finish it up. Here's the leftover sediment, or lees, I guess would be the appropriate word, maybe. I poured a little out just to have some to taste. It tastes fine, it's doing really well. I have everything racked over here into my carboy, number 10 stopper, the airlock. These new plastic carboys are pretty nice really they're a lot lighter in weight and they're far less likely to break one glass is really nice but it uh, it's heavy and it's fragile I've been using plastic carboys the last few years and I've had pretty good luck I've used five gallon water bottles and they work okay they just tend to collect yeast on the edges of them they're not nice and smooth like this thing is. Well, I have to put this aside for one more month. Then it should be time to bottle it. It's fairly clear right now. It has a lot of uh, particles yet in it. It's coming along nicely. It's October now and finally time to bottle this wonderful looking blueberry wine. I ended up letting it go two months in the carboy after the second racking. I read a few different recipes, a lot of them recommended that. In the past I usually went one month after each racking, but I have ran into problems where I'd have little bits of berry skin or something still floating around, even though the wine was pretty clear. So, to uh, review, started fermentation in June. Did primary fermentation, racked it, went a month, racked it, and went two months, and now I'm going to bottle. I'm taking one more gravity reading, too. I've lost a couple of points. It's hard to see there, but it's actually down to 1.006 now. When I recalculate my alcohol content, that comes out to about 14.7%. So, it's going to be a pretty strong batch. Now here's everything I need to bottle. Some potassium sorbate because we're going to sweeten it. If you're going to bottle it dry, you don't need any potassium sorbate. Whether you sweeten it or bottle it dry, you still need sulfites in the form of Campton tablets. Five of them crushed, since it's five gallons. And this goes in at a half teaspoon per gallon, I believe. So I'm going to have to put in two and a half teaspoons of potassium sorbate. That combined with the sulfites will prevent it from fermenting in the bottle with all the sugar I'm going to add to sweeten it. I've got corks here, um, about 27 corks, and my handy Italian made corker. You stick the corks in there, put it on top of the bottle, and squeeze both levers down pushes the corks in the bottles and I have 27 bottles I keep them cleaned and uh, stored with a little foil over the top to keep the dust out and I have a five gallon bottling bucket along with my racking cane and tubing so I'm going to siphon my five gallons out of my carboy into the five gallon bottling bucket which I'll add the crushed Campton tablets and the sorbates to in addition to the sugar I need to add to sweeten it I'm going to start out with two cups of sugar one cup of water so what I'll do is pour the sugar in the water microwave it or heat it or however you want get that water warm enough until it dissolves all the sugar stir it up really well and that's what I want to use to sweeten it with now I'm starting out with two cups uh, I might need more. I'll, I'll have to taste it after I put it in. I've used anywhere from two to five cups. 
for a really dry batch of blueberry I made once. I had to add five cups of sugar to it to get it uh, sweet enough. The drier it is, the more sugar you need. So I'm going to mix up some uh, sulfite solution in my bottling bucket here, sanitize my equipment, and I'm actually going to fill all my bottles with sulfite solution, and rinse them out with it. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to have the sugar in the water. It always takes two parts sugar, one part water. It's hard to believe that little amount of water will dissolve all that sugar, but it will if you get it warm enough. You can use a little more water. It'll dissolve a little faster if you'd like. But uh, that's what I'm going to sweeten it with after I get it good and hot and dissolved. So I'll start that heating and mix up my sulfite solution and get my equipment sanitized. I'm going to put some sulfite solution in here, float these around, get them nice and wet and sanitized so they'll slide in the bottles. So I guess I better get started. There's most of the bottles rinsed. I have my corks, which are number nine corks one and a half inch long I might add and this is how I rinse my bottles out in a big bucket of sulfite solution so I need to finish rinsing these and get to siphoning my two cups of sugar is dissolved I stirred it it's pretty hot so Good to do this early, get a chance to cool off a little. Doesn't need to be real hot when I put it in the wine. All the bottles are ready now. I have my sulfites and sorbate added to the bucket. And my dissolved two cups of sugar. So I just need to start siphoning and add my sugar while it's running in the bucket. The blueberry wine is siphoning into the bottling bucket. I'm going to pour in my dissolved two cups of sugar. Slowly, it should help it mix in while it's filling the bucket. As always, whenever siphoning, you want to try to avoid splashing. You don't want to introduce a lot of oxygen. So I'm going to have to deal with this as it goes down. This is a five gallon bucket, but it should have about, hopefully, an extra half gallon or so of headspace at the top. If not, I'll have one really big problem. Well, there's the bucket. Got the sugar, sulfites, sorbates. It's just ready to be put into bottles. I normally use a larger bucket to do this with, but they just happen to be full of beer right now, so. I'm lucky I had enough space left in this five gallon bucket. Most of them do have about half gallon to three quarters of a gallon extra. So I'm going to run this down into my bottles. I forgot to mention this one piece of equipment, my bottle filler. It's gravity operated. The weight of the liquid holds it shut until you push down on it in the bottle. And I'll see if I can uh, get it working here. I've got a slight leak around my spigot. It's another unusual issue. So let me go ahead and get these filled. My two cups of sugar seems to be quite sufficient. It's plenty sweet enough for me. It's got a pretty good alcohol component. So all I have to do is fill all these bottles and get some corks put in them. And 
here's the end result 26 bottles of delicious blueberry wine I started with 27 bottles just in case I had to sweeten it a lot if you had much sugar and water it increases the volume so I got 26 good bottles and a really delicious sample I might add this stuff is very good I've made blueberry uh, several times in the past I don't even know how many but this tastes as good or better than any I've made which brings up a good point about blueberry wine you can drink it young you can drink it old it will improve let's see up to about a year some wines improve tremendously with time blueberry it just gets a little bit better and you can drink it now it'll be a little bit better in about a year I mean noticeably just slightly some wines have a makes a tremendous improvement in a year's time but this you can drink it young drink it whenever you feel like it so I'm going to print some removable labels so when the bottles are empty I can peel the labels off and reuse them so I guess that brings me to the end I uh, wish everyone good luck in their winemaking adventures